Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We give you praise, honor, and glory, Lord. Thank you for those of you who come in to assemble into his presence today. Thank those of you who are connecting with us via Facebook Live, those who will be connecting with us on YouTube. We thank and praise God for the medium that he has given us to continue to worship and to praise his name. We encourage you to take that time to, to settle in and get a part of this worship experience today. We thank those of you who are connecting with us near and far in the name of Jesus. But God, we give you praise. But there's no other place I'd rather be. Amen. Amen. No other place I'd rather be on a Sunday morning at 11 a.m. It just don't seem right sometimes. If you're not here in the house of God, amen, no matter what we did on this weekend, and I will tell you, we had a time last night. That's what the young people say. They say we had a time last night celebrating Deacon Oliver Sutton's 74th birthday, amen. All his friends and his truly his family right here was there to celebrate him reaching another year. Sometimes it don't always seem as easy and he's gone through some challenges over the past year and some losses and we thank and praise God that we were able to celebrate our beloved deacon amen and we had a time last night and then we went to a, a women's conference over in St. Pete and you all remember the lady who spoke sister Hyla Singleton for our uh, breast cancer awareness we had an awesome this is war conference amen intercession conference in the war room so we had an amazing time where some of the women of the church of this house went in to begin to worship and have an experience with others in our community in the Tampa Bay area. Amen. And even our musician was there praising and worshiping. It's good to go into a place where we can see familiar faces. Amen. We thank and praise God for that opportunity. We want to ask you before we continue on with our scripture and remind you all those of you who may not have known we want to keep our dear sister jc richardson lifted up amen she was in a car accident but thank god we praise god amen that's right that she got out lord unscathed and she's home recovering but i don't know if you know when you get in a bad accident and still shakes you up a little bit so we just Stretch our hands towards you, our dear sister, and pray that God will continue to use you and calm anything that's going on and work things out. It's not by accident that he would save you during such a crisis time. Amen. Amen. And we thank and praise God for you. Amen. The scripture this morning is familiar as Psalms 150. Amen. Psalms 150 says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmaments of his power. Not my power, not your power, but praise him in the firmaments of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. He is saved. He is kept even through adversity, even through death, amen, even through sickness. He still kept us. Praise him in according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrels and the dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud sounding cymbals, upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything, let everything, I said let everything, every person, every woman, every boy, every girl, everyone that's old, everyone that's young, every man, amen, amen. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you that we have come into this sanctuary to give you honor and to give you praise, God. Lord Jesus, we know that it is your hand that can go and touch each and every one of us right where we need it, oh God. We know, Father God, that you will use us to be instruments to give you praise, God. 
you will use us to exhort your name, oh God. Not just the choir, not just Minister Sherwood, not just the pastor who will come and minister your word, oh God, but that you will use us collectively as we demonstrate your acts of greatness, oh God. Lord, touch these your people, Lord Jesus, who is experiencing trying times right now, God. Touch them and let them know that you're there. You'll walk with them. You'll talk with them, Lord Jesus. And you'll have your way with them, oh God. Father God, and we won't forget to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And we submit this service unto you, God. We submit our will unto you, God. We submit our way unto you, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Amen, amen, amen. From your belly, say amen, amen, amen. Minister Sherwood. Bless the Lord in this house. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Say with me, wonderful, say wonderful, wonderful.
bless your name, God. Wonderful, wonderful. Ooh, wonderful. Ooh. Yes, he is. Now, come on, let's take a moment and just worship God in your own way. Come on. Come on and worship him. Worship the Lord our God. He got you up out the bed this morning. Come on, give him praise. In your own way, you should have been dead and gone, but look at you, you're here. Him praise because he's truly marvelous he's wonderful he's an awesome God one of our members like sister Carla said was in an accident this past week and if it was left up to the enemy the enemy would have taken her life but they say only but God but God nothing but the grace of God and look at you and I we're here today if it had not been for his strength for his love his mercy that's why we can't play around when we come into the house of the Lord, regardless of what we may have experienced on this week. Amen. Rather was last night, the night before. Listen, when we come into the house of God, it is time to sacrifice and give him a sacrificial praise because he inhabit the praises of his people this morning. And I counted not Robert to take any praise for myself, but to give God the praise. I thank him because he's been good. You're wonderful, God. We appreciate you. We don't take it for granted, God. The breath that we have. Listen to this. This is an old song. You may know this. Thank you. you, Lord. <laughs> so simple, right? Thank you, Lord. Got a good crew here. Help us sing it together. Thank you, Lord. Anybody thank you?
so good. exercising our faith. Somebody said I'm exercising. I'm exercising. Because when you're exercising, you're putting something in it. Amen. So you can get something out of it. 
We're not, see, when, whenever you're practicing, guess what? You don't get rewarded for practice. Say that, man. We're here exercising our faith. No joke. Let's say no joke, Doc. Glory. This is an exercise of faith. Seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're still worshiping. Amen. Hallelujah. We're still stirring in our spirits. Amen. Amen. Glory, Amen. glory, Amen. glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for a house that's free. Amen. Thank you for a house that's free. We want to share with you all that today is the fifth Sunday, and every fifth Sunday we have women's awareness recognition where we take the opportunity and time to remind us to be aware of critical issues that are going on in our community. Specifically, we looked at it as being for women, but it's for all issues because if the women are affected by it, then the men are too, amen? And so this uh, fifth Sunday, we wanna have my mother, Sister Vernadine Randall, Mother Vernadine Randall, Mother V, Mom, you you sister? Mama, whoever, sister. Amen. She your sister? whatever name to she come forth, Amen. Sometimes I'm the mother, sometimes she the mother, sometimes I'm now. the Hold sister, Hold Amen. Up. Amen. Hold up. She said it. Hold she up. said it. Blaspheme. <laughs> no blaspheming in this church. She said it. You can't flip flop that. Either she your mama. Oh, she ain't. She your mama. She's my mother. Thank you. Amen. Come on now. That's my mama. Amen. I'm glad that my mother is here Let's keep serving. It, keep Amen. Keep it straight here. Let's keep it straight. Give it a round of she applause. Ain't your Amen. Come on, mom. She ain't my sister. That's Mother Bernadine Randall, mother of the church. She's not my peer. Good morning. Good morning. She's Eloise's peer. Oh, I'm I'm not talking in the mic. You can tell I'm not used to being up here. I wish I didn't have to hold on to this mic, I tell you. But anyway, here we are, praise God, for this Sunday. And I hated to interfere and interrupt that worship, but we are uh, planned, and we do know that we still are worshiping with the Lord is what I'm about to bring out. Um, as we know, Election Day is right around the corner. And I decided that our special feature today, is, okay, can you hear me? Yes, okay. Sir. Is get out and vote. Amen. 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 So to Bishop and to Sister Silla and to you all in my New Life family, I just am here this morning to briefly talk about voting. And before I do, I put some of my sisters and daughters on spot. They didn't know, but I, they're going to help me in this at the word. end. So I know it's a be ye also ready. They didn't know I was going to do this, but they're going to be ready. They're going to help me out. Amen. 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 But as I was saying, I'm here this morning to briefly talk about voting. I'm not here about trying to persuade people to vote one way or another. It's about encouraging as many eligible voters to possibly to get out and vote because the democracy cannot work effectively if the citizens don't participate in the process. Amen. We must put aside our differences for a moment in the name of championing for democracy. We can agree to disagree on many things, but let's at least agree on the importance of voting. The most important That's right good, citizens have is the right to vote. By voting, the through people have a voice in the government. The people decide who will represent them in government. Before voting in an election, though, each citizen should be well informed about the issues and the candidates. How many of us know that it is a right and a privilege to vote? Amen. People shed blood, sweat, and tears, they marched, they fought, and they even died for our right to vote. The struggles for equal voting rights date back to the earliest days of our U.S. history. Entrenched groups have long tried to keep the vote out of the hands of the less powerful. It literally took an act of Congress 
and amendments to the Constitution in order for blacks and none want white men and for women to gain the right to vote. And right now in communities across this country, people are doing all they can to minimize and to make it difficult for certain segments of our population to be able to vote. Over time, people worked at all levels to enact constitutional amendments and laws expanding access to the vote based on race and ethnicity, gender, disability, age, and other factors. During Reconstruction, the following Following the Civil War, Congress passed the 15th Amendment to the Constitution, which <coughs> issued the people could not be denied the right to vote because of their race. Amen. Women won the right to vote and the, was ratified at the 19th Amendment in the U.S. Constitution in 1920. The landmark Voting Rights Act of 1965 passed by Congress took major steps to curtail voter suppression. Now, after a period of bipartisan efforts to expand the giving of the rights to voting Americans, once again, we face new obstacles. Even as barriers to voting began receding in cause ensuring decades, many Southern states erected new laws and obstacles such as poll taxes and the literary test and keeping the vote out of the hands of African American people. Now after a period of bipartisan efforts to expand the giving of the right to vote, here we are again faced with some same old obstacles. In recent years they have been, there have been many attacks on the voting <coughs> rights and voting protections. We see how Donald Trump tried to claim voter fraud and that he actually won and that he actually won the election. He and his supporters have continued to false claims without presenting any evidence or finding any voter frauds or even in the process. Continued false claims of rampant voter fraud have added fuel to the fire and presented even bolder efforts to suppress the vote. Adding to those problems, government all at all levels have largely failed to make the necessary investments in election and technology to poll working people for training to ensure the integrity and the efficiency of our electoral, electoral system. Even in 2018, nearly two-thirds of Florida voters approved Amendment 4. And Amendment 4 restored voting rights to most people with felony That's convictions right. who have completed the term of their sentence. Amen. The amendment originally restored the right to vote to roughly 1.4 million people. But shortly after the election, the state's GOP-controlled legislator passed a law requiring that those people with felony convictions pay off all of their fines, fees, and restitutions associated with their sentences before they would be eligible to register to vote. <coughs> then after GOP Governor Ron DeSantis signed the law in June 2019, roughly 774,000 people who would have been eligible to know. vote were no longer allowed. He would have lost. Was this a political ploy? Think about it. Guess no how many no of ploy. those 774,000 were non-white and most disenfranchised voters were in that number. Think about it. There were multiple legal challenges to that law and in May 2020, a federal judge said Republicans had created an administrative train wreck and ruled that the people blocked from voting could still participate in the election. But a federal imp 
appeal, a federal appeals court converted that order. That back and forth created widespread confusion and left many Floridians unclear about their eligibility to vote. And eventually, 10 black men, they all registered to vote while in jail or mail ballots from jail, but had unpaid fines and fees from prior felony convictions that forbid them from voting under the 2019 law. According to the state's attorney's office, each are facing potential five years in prison and a $5,000 fine for voting. That's the confusion. Florida gave voting rights to people with convictions. Now, some face charges for voting. These arrests show how the constitutional amendment now is being weaponized against people who may not even realize that they're committing a crime. So now all eyes are on the 2022 election, the midterm election, scheduled for November the 8th, 2022, with a total of 469 seats in the U.S. Congress that are up for re-election, re or for election, excuse me. That is 34 Senate seats and all 435 House seats. The 2022 midterm election results could dramatically change the makeup of the Congress. Democrats have much to lose in these midterm elections. The current majority in both houses of Congress are slim and com common historically. The president's party tends to lose seats in the midterm election. Republicans are banking on this historical trend and on the voters' concerns about rising infl inflation to flip the House of Congress in their favor. Record high voter turnout is expected for the 22 election. But even that may not be enough to shake things up. Mm. Non-voters, that is, people who are eligible to vote but are not registered, right. or who are registered but rarely vote, make up 43% of eligible voters age population. That means 43% percent of the people that are eligible are not voting. Wow. Roughly, that's roughly 100 million people. And while 60 percent of eligible voters are in presidential elections, only 40 percent of those vote in the midterm election. This is what lots of voters that are not being kept, this means that a lot of votes are not being captured in the midterm election because those who are registered, they don't vote. It's always been a struggle to increase voter turnout, but that doesn't mean it's not a battle worth fighting. Whether you're a Democrat, a Republican, or an independent, you can be a champion for democracy by encouraging your network of people, and as they said on Saturday at the conference, your nation, your garden, you need to encourage them to vote in the midterm election. Midterm elections matter. Most voters only vote during presidential elections, but midterm elections are arguably even way more important. Members of Congress are the ones who introduce and vote bills that become national laws and vote to confirm federally appointed judges, including the Supreme Court justices who interpret and uphold those laws. That's a lot of power that is concentrated in the hands of a few people. People think presidents hold all the power, but their power is limited. And it's actually Congress that holds the power to pass laws. That's why it is so important to vote in the upcoming midterm election and elect people who will work to pass legislation that is important to you. Again, let me state this. 34 Senate seats are up for election this fall, including two of them from this state. 
I know you've probably been frustrated and with the Senate fil filibuster. So now is your opportunity to change that. Yes. Your vote count. Did you know that half of the 30 measures blocked by filibusters between 1917 and 1974 involved civil rights? What is a filibuster? It's a Senate rule that allows any senator to engage in extended debate to prevent a vote on a bill, a resolution, amendment, or other debatable question. Your vote is your voice, and I hope you use it wisely on November the 8th. Did you know that 40% of the voters vote during the midterm? That means that only a small majority of the people will decide who makes laws and national policies. Your vote really does make a difference, yes. especially during the midterm elections. So please vote on November 8th. What can we do to help? Well, the first thing is you need to register to vote. And it's too late to register now. But at least next year, register to vote in the election. You have to be registered to vote before you can exercise your right to vote. Each state sets its own rules and deadlines when it comes to registering. So it can be, excuse me, confusing to figure it all out, especially for the first time voters. Remove this obstacle by offering to help your friends and family register to vote, or, brought, or either by dropping some useful registration information by your, boy, your vote, your voice. There's a lot going on in the world right now, and we all have to have a lot to say about it, whether it's Black Lives Matter, abortion rights, student loan debt, gun control, climate change, health care, or immigration issues. Now is the time to follow our concerns with your vote. Appeal to what your friends and family think is important to encourage them. And as I said, every two years, nearly 700,000 Americans turn age 18 and become eligible to vote. But studies show that there, these newly, excuse me, newly minted adults vote at least much lower than the general population. Don't let these votes slip through the cracks. Remind your young ones in your life that voting is a huge part of becoming an adult. Vote with your dollars. Legally, you can only vote in elections in your state of residence. However, that doesn't mean that you can't contribute. That doesn't mean you can't influence the outcome of other state elections. How? By voting with your dollars. Donate to the campaigns of politicians who you believe in. Encourage your friends and families to do the same. The earlier and the more frequently these donations happen, the more likely a candidate will win a party nomination or an en endorsement because the ability to fund raise is a factor or show up as a front runner because name recognition is important at the poll, and that takes dollars. Democrats hold the smallest majority in both houses of Congress and are in real danger of losing that in the upcoming midterm election. If they are to hold the ground that they fought and had gained, then every Democrat needs to come out and vote in full force. Republicans, again, stands a real chance of flipping the House and the Senate in their favor and this fall. But it will require every single Republican voter to get out there and exercise their vote and their right to vote. So see you at the polls, mail in your ballot, but vote. Let your voice be heard. Your vote really matters, Chris. So here's some famous quotes about voting. Abraham Lincoln said, the ballot is stronger than the bullet. A man without a vote is a man without protection. 
Lyndon B. Johnson said, the ignorance of one voter in a democracy impairs the security of all states. John F. Kennedy states, if we don't vote, we are ignoring history and giving away our future. Barack Obama stated, there's no such thing as a vote that doesn't matter. George Jean Nathan, bad officials are elected by good citizens who do not vote. Every election is determined by the people who show up. Just because you don't take an interest in politics does not mean politics won't take an interest in you. Or won't be affected and then by it. George Carlin says, if you don't vote, you lose the right to complain. That's right. So I say it again, mm -hmm. see you at the polls, but vote. Let your voice be heard. You vote. Your vote really matters as to what happens in dem democracy. But I want to leave you these scriptures, following scriptures. Santana, read it. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. Okay, 1 Corinthians 1 and 16. Yes, I also baptized the house of Stephanas. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. Okay. Excuse me, I gave you the wrong one. Should That's all right. Colossians 1.16. Did I give that to someone? That's okay. Come on, Kim. Proverbs 11.14. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. Okay. Dana? Psalms 22 and 8, is this the one who relies on the Lord? Then let the Lord save him. If the Lord loves him so much, let the Lord rescue him. And Psalms 47 and 8, God reigns above the nations, sitting on his holy throne. Okay, and I'm going to read Colossians 1, 16. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and things on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. And Carla? Romans 13, 1 through 3. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, the powers that are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shall have praise of the same. Amen. Amen. And the final scripture that I want to leave for you is Second Chronicles 7.14. If my people, God said, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. We need to exercise our vote. We don't, some people believe in charity, chariots and horses, but we know that God is the one who really oversees this world and who's in control. But we have to do our part. So finally, I want to close with this prayer. <coughs> Holy Father, thank you for the opportunity to have a voice in the way my government runs. I praise you for the votes that I have. During this time of debate, confusion, diffusion, and decision making, please have your sovereign hand over this country. Please keep our country healthy during this season. Give us the peace that passes understanding about the vote and the outcome. Your word says you change the times and the seasons. So you are in control of this phase of our, phase of our nation's history. I ask for the season to not be volatile, 
and that our nation would see you in it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mother. Amen. Thank you for the information. Come on, y'all ready to have church? Amen. Did y'all come here to give God their best? Amen. Hallelujah. The fight continues if we just fight on. Amen. As mother, mother has already reiterated to us, every vote counts. Come on, let's fight on this morning. Come on and put your hands together. Come on and give God some praise. He's worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. We got to fight a good fight. Come on. Somebody, somebody, somebody. 
She want to shout hallelujah.
How he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost. How he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and he turned me around. How he placed my feet. On solid ground. Yeah, when I think about how the Lord. That's right, baby. How he saved I see you me. Feeling it. You feeling it? How he raised me. How he filled me. With the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost. How we heal the unknown. To the unknown.
like he lost your mind. Come on and pray. Oh, he's been good. He's been good. He's been kind. He's been wonderful. He's a friend of mine. Hey, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise.
excited to see you worship Come on, let me hear you say it. Everybody. It excites me. It makes me want to shout. Me myself. Come on, church. Lord. Come on, everybody. Any authenticity in the house. That's it. Let him hear you this morning. Real praise. He wants to hear you. Let's say it again. Who makes me want? Hallelujah. Open your mouth and give him. Come on, declare it. You can do better than that. Come on, we, we have a guest in the house. Show the guest how Hallelujah. much we love God. Glory. Exercise your faith. Come on. Let it not be an exercise of futility. Come on, exercise your faith. Yes. Open up your mouth, clap your hands, stomp your feet. The Lord has been good to you. I said, if the Lord has been good to you, yes, sir. Come on, somebody. Oh. If you could pinpoint where He's been good to you, I dare you to give Him a praise. Look back. Come on, look back. Did He wake you up this morning? Yeah. He didn't have to do it, <laughs> hey! but he did it anyway. Yeah. And I didn't get any calls. Mercy extended. Congratulations on my behalf. Oh, come on and give God some thanks. This could have been a different morning. Somebody you love real dearly could have could have slipped away last night. I said, somebody that you love dearly. I'm dancing on somebody that slipped away last night. Hey! Anybody excited in this place? Has God been good to you? He did more than I ever expected. He's more. He did more than I ever expected. Tell him, make it yeah. He's been more than I ever expected. Hey, he's been more. I didn't 
is church, isn't it? I said, this is God's house, isn't it? Well, it's all right to praise him then. When you do this, miracles take place. He's the setup. All the things he's done. All the things he's done. He's done. All the things. All the things. He's done. 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 I said, let the redeem of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Just a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all your troubles. He will hear you when you cry. He'll answer by and by. Just keep the prayer wheel turning. And keep that fire burning. Just a little talk with Jesus. Old folks said he'll make it all right. I got to watch when I say old folk because I done hit that, that uh, old folk. You know, you said about them old folk. Man, hold up now. You're talking about me now. Get past 65, 67 years old. You up there where they say old folks. It's old folks neighborhood. Amen. How many really glad they're in Gone Town? I just got five more songs we're going to do. That's all. She laughed at it. See, you wasn't saying nothing when you were at that sudden party over there dancing and stuff, joking. I saw y'all. I saw y'all. I did all my stuff for y'all. Got there, though. See, when y'all got there, I sat down like a lying saint, old hypocrite. You know how we do. I ain't buy a drink because I bought my drinks for y'all goddamn. <laughs> you know, we can lie, man. <laughs> but really, we're not here practicing anything. There ain't no practice. Hallelujah. I'm not practicing anything this morning. They're not even practicing 
um, uh, worship. This is a, this is real live. Yes, it is, sir. This is live. We're live. Somebody said live. Can't edit this. Either it's authentic or it's not. Either it's hot or it's cold. Ain't no such thing as middle ground in here. No such thing as straddling the fence. I know that's, that, that might be where you have been. And I'm not even going to say your faith. Because you don't keep faith in a place like that. Faith is meant to be put at work. Faith has to go to work. So I wouldn't dare even um, attempt to say that about some of you. But we fail to exercise our faith because we're too busy practicing our religion. And you're no good at practicing your religion. Because if you were, you wouldn't practice it. You'd be exercising your faith. Faith is everything according to scripture. It's the thing that you should be after. I know the Bible talks about love, but I want faith. I'll love later. But faith does work by love. Faith cannot work unless you got love supporting it. Someone will say, as James says, that they have faith. And you, if you have faith, you got to show me some deeds. You can't have faith without no deeds. Faith has to be an expression of all that you feel about the thing that you put your faith in. I was a little challenged. I'm a politician by nature. I'm a historian. I mean, I'm a history major, but I mean, all that stuff, I, I'm, I'm deep in it. But this morning, I have no taste for it. And the reason being is because uh, my focus is faith. And I can't, you can't mix that stuff together. Amen. My life and your life is not determined by Democrats or Republicans. It's not. It ain't determined by who's in, the, who's in Tallahassee or who's in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. That doesn't determine my success. And oftentimes we get caught up in that stuff. Because we, 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 we oftentimes we practice what we should be exercising. Faith has to be exercised. And, 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 and oftentimes you can't always see people exercising your faith, but you can see them practicing their religion. You show sure enough to see that. Go me the book of Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to read six verses this morning to you. And, and the Lord gave me a word, Chantan. And he says, if your faith says yes, watch this, God cannot say no. Nobody caught that. No, he, he, this is all biblical. If your faith says yes, I didn't say God won't say no. I say he can't say no. He can't. It's a dilemma for him. Stuck. If your faith says yes, God can't say no. Even if he wanted to, he can't. Somebody said, if my faith says yes, God can't say no. Let's read the text. Hebrews chapter 11, 1 through 6 in the King James Version. And we can, we can stand, if you don't mind standing, we read this together. It's all right. There's nothing spiritual about standing when you read. Just want to make sure your, your, your blood is circulating and you woke. Amen. I got your attention. Thank, thank God for the worship team. Amen. They certainly brought us to the place. They got us there. Amen. Should be no excuse now of us receiving. And if there's something in the way, come on to the altar right now. Make your way down here. I'll, we're in here. I said we're not practicing. We actually, we actually cast out devils in here. I said we actually lay hands on the sick and we believe by faith they will recover. We ain't practicing nothing in here. This is, this is all live, baby. Not, not, this ain't Memorex. This is all live. 
So if you need something, oftentimes we get so caught up in the, in the, uh, in the protocol of, of service that we, we fail to understand the meaning of why we're here. We're here so people can get everything they can from God. It's like when you're a child and you got to go to the bathroom, but you're with some insensitive adults and they're driving and you want them to stop. And they tell you, wait. You're sitting there about your bladder about to burst. Let's read. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. That's critical there. God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, but without faith, I say without, without the preacher, I ain't say without your grandmother's prayers, without faith. I say without your, your, your story, yeah, your story is tragic. It's horrible what is taking place in your life. Be that as it may, as, as tragic as your story is, it's not going to get you any help. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must first believe, that's the presupposition, that he is. Somebody say he is. So we ain't trying to prove you to you today that there's a God. I'm not in here to prove it. The presupposition you walk through these doors, you know that there is a God. Someone say, I know he is. But without faith, it is impossible. Please, God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So for about the next 18 minutes, I'm going to preach on the topic. If my faith says yes, God cannot say no. My faith said, yes, God can't say no. Father, let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the simplicity of your word. We're gathered here, all of us. Even have somebody that's never been here before. Nothing is by accident. We've come to break bread. We've come to dine at your table. We've come to receive, whether it's edification or rebuke or correction, whatever, however you want to slice it and dice it. In whatever table or whatever plate today, God, we give you access and we give you free reign. Because when we leave this place, we want to say that we've touched you. We, we experienced you. We had an encounter with you. When we leave this place, we want to certainly say that we have been edified and your name has been glorified. This and all other merits we beg in the wonderful, matchless, oh, awesome name of Jesus the Christ. Somebody say amen. And before you sit down, clap your hands like you love him. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I, I have five, five, five points I'm going to bring out to you, five today, just five. Um, one of the greatest chapters in the Bible is this chapter right here. It is known as God's great hall of fame. Men and women who have believed God down through the centuries are listed as being great men and women of, of God. The key to their greatness. You can't be great in God if you ain't got no faith. I had to learn that faith is not something that, you know, we, we, we make faith seem like it's almost an impossibility to really have. And, but it's not. It's just, it's just the reality that you trust something more than other people do. You can catch that. That's, a, that's an easy definition of what faith really is. is that I trust something. I believe in something. So first thing I want to talk about, what is the meaning? Somebody say the meaning of faith. What does faith mean? And the, and the only time that the Bible ever defines faith is in this book. 
time and again the Bible discusses faith, the great importance of faith. Tell us that we have to have faith in order to believe God. Tell us that the great things that happen to those who do believe God. The Bible also gives example after example of people who have had faith in God. But this is the only time that faith is defined. In Hebrews 11, 1, it says, now faith is the substance of things so for, and the evidence of things not seen. That's in the King James. In the New American Standard Bible, it said, now faith is the assurance the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. William says that faith is the assurance of things we hope for and the proof of the reality of the things we cannot see. Beck says that faith is being sure of the things we hope for. Being convinced of the things we can see. The Amplified Bible says now faith is is the assurance, the confirmation, the title, the deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Do I have any faith walkers in here? It, 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 you can't see it, but I still believe it. I can't explain it, but... But just trust me, I believe it. Amen. You can't always explain things of faith to people that even call themselves people of faith. Because sometimes God don't give them the ability to believe where you're believing him for. So sometimes you can tell people about what you're believing God for and they think you're crazy. Because they're words of faith and he might only spoke them to you. The great servant of God former generation Matthew Henry said faith and hope go together and the same things that they are the object of our hope become the object of our faith anybody hear what I'm saying the word substance is the Greek word hoptasias hop, hopotasias means the foundation somebody say foundation it's the title it's the guarantee that things that we hope for and it's the evidence the Greek word elgosius means the conviction According to most commentators, that is what is meant by these two words. Therefore, faith would be defined as the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. So what faith really is, is faith is trusting and possessing all that God is and all that God says. I said faith is simply trusting all that God is and all that God says. And when you get somebody that trusts all that God is and all that God says, it ain't about the clothes that they got on their back no more. It ain't about the country they live in no more. It ain't about who they working for. I wish I had it. It ain't about who they married to no more. It ain't about the color of their skin no more. When you find an individual who has put their absolute trust in God, I wish I had some help in here. I ain't getting nobody to walk with me. I said, faith is trusting and possessing all that God is and all that God says. Sometimes, listen, I shout not because of what I have. I shout because of all that God is. I shout because of what God has said. What he said, he said that I'm the apple of his eye. Which means I don't have to pander for his affection. And guess what? Over the years, over these 67 years I've been living, he has proven to me just that. That he cares enough about me that that scripture has become a reality. And you ought to see me getting dressed this morning. I felt just like I was that apple. Oh, I believe you. See, y'all, I don't know. Let me go over here. You ought to saw me getting dressed this morning. You ought to see me making my bed this morning. You ought to see me cleaning up after myself. I was doing everything just like I was the apple of his eye. When I walked in here happy as a law, guess what? I was doing everything like I'm that. I ain't trying to impress you. I'm not in trying to impress anybody. Why? Because guess what? I went to bed the apple of his eye and I woke up the apple of his eye. Even when I mess up, I'm still I'm 
still his apple. I said, I'm still. So that changes how I walk, changes how I talk, it changes how I let you talk to me. It changes where I keep myself to. Faith is believing and possessing all that God is and all that God says. Watch this. Faith is having confidence in and possessing all that God is and all that God says. Faith is hoping for something and possessing it. Even though we're not in a new building, I already got it. I said, even though we're not in it yet, I'm already in it. Because the object of my faith is not the building. The object of my faith is the creator. And I believe everything that he said about me, regardless of where I'm at presently. Doesn't have nothing to do with bank status, ain't got nothing to do with credit status. Although I've been monitoring those things and I've seen how he's educated me, got me healthy in that area. So it is not a long stretch when he does bring me into the purpose that he has for my life. You know, someone's sitting around, God, I want you to do me a miracle. I need a house, but your credit ain't but 255. You want you really want a miracle. But you first need to get to a place of obedience. First need to get to a place where you have practicality in your life. Where you become responsible for the things that you are responsible for. You can't get a miracle that big when you ain't take get a little stuff you got. So I said make it plain, make it plain. I'm trying, I'm trying. Note what the Bible is not saying about faith. I think so. I hope I get this church. I think I'm going to get this church. I think I'm going to get married one day. I hope. It ain't saying that. You saying that. There's some voices that you're listening to. They saying that. But God ain't never said that. Faith ain't about I think so. I hope so. It may be so. It may not be so. It might be true. It might not be true. That is not biblical faith. Biblical faith does not deal with what is unreal and imaginary. So even though what I'm saying sounds like a mirage or, or imagination to you, it's real to me. I don't care how broke I am. I don't care how long I've been broke. If I, God has told me something about me, ain't nothing you can say to change that can't change my reality why because i believe watch this everything he said and everything that he is that's the first fundamental principle of defining what faith is faith ain't new life christian fellowship faith ain't bishop register faith is believing everything not some things but everything that he said and everything that he is. Now, let me tell you something that, that, that I found out. There's some things about God. There's some things that he can't do. See? See, 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 you think I'm just putting my trust in somebody who, who's, not, who's not warranted of my trust? I found out something, Cassandra. Found out he don't lie. Not that he don't lie, he can't lie. Oh, y'all ain't, ain't nobody hollering with me. Come on. I said, not that he won't lie, but he can't lie. So if he can't lie and he says some things that seem crazy, guess what? All I got to do is hold on. Oh. The greatest challenge to our faith is whether or not we can develop the kind of patience that guarantees what we've been waiting for is ours see see he says he says he says count it all joy when you go through practices no he ain't saying nothing about no practice that's why alan ivers said y'all making all this noise about practice now some of you don't know what i'm talking about but that's all right it ain't about practice somebody said about practice it's about the real thing. 
So he says about the real thing. So, 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 so I believe in what God has said about me. In spite of the color of my skin. The reason why I was, was troubled this morning a little bit about politics and politicians is because we almost make it seem like they control our destiny. They don't control nothing unless you let them control it. Yes, we need to vote. Yes, we need to make sure that our vote counts. But at the end of the day and when the dust settles, God is still God. He didn't get voted in and he can't get voted out. He ain't trying to win no popularity contest and he don't care if you praise him or not. He's still God. Whether you love him or not, he's still God. Whether you give his money or not, he's still God. Whether you come to church or not, he's still God. Whether you give him honor or not, he's still God. He's God all by him. And I kind of like that. That you and I can't determine whether or not he's God or not. That we don't take anything away like, like recently Kanye West has been in the news. He's been talking about he's the richest black billionaire and all of a sudden now. Because watch this. Whenever God do something for you, can't nobody take it back from you. I wish I had a witness in here. One of the songs that I want to hear this morning. What God has for me. It is for me. I wish I had a witness in here. Somebody give somebody a high five if you're not worried about catching COVID and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, what God has for me, it is for me. And the psalmist said, I know without a doubt that the Lord will bring me out. What God I said, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to share, I'm trying to share something with you, beloved. What God has for me. Somebody said, it's for me. It's for me. Somebody said, it's for me. It's mine. It says, it's all mine. Watch this. The person who holds the title or the deed to property actually possesses the property. So God wants you to get to a place where you possess it before you step in it. Watch this. That don't take, that don't take, faith is not, not intentional. That takes faith that's intentional and that takes faith that cannot be moved. Cannot be persuaded to move. Amen. Listen, your faith has got to lock in and nothing can move you. I wish I had a, I wish I had a witness in here. It, it, isn't that what Mary said? Mary got a prophetic word that she was going to be the woman to carry our, all of our hopes and dreams inside her womb. And, and, and she said, how, how will this be? I, I don't know a man. I've never known a man. And the Holy Spirit said, what's going to happen to you? The Holy Spirit is going to overshadow channel you and what's going to take place inside of you is going to be an immaculate conception no it ain't been done before but you're going to be the prototype of what i'm getting ready to do on earth and the bible says i said the bible says that mary that little handmaid says be it unto me as you said it i wish i had somebody in this building this morning You've been down on your luck, but I'm here to tell you a prophetic word. If God said you're the head, you are the head. Start acting like it. Start walking like it. You should dress like you're the head. Even if you're living in the basement. I wish I had a witness in here. You got to fake it till you make it. You got to walk in it until you get there. That's what he says in faith is having the deed, the title. You already possess what you believe in God for. Do I have a witness in the building this morning? Open up your mouth and give God a praise for what you believe. Oh, come on, come on, saints. Come on, saints. I, I, I feel a shout in me this morning. I said I feel a shout in me. I said, I feel like preaching this morning. I feel like letting it ride. I feel like letting it hang all out there. 
So the first thing is we define what faith is and what faith isn't. Faith ain't what I think or what I, what I thought. No, no. If God says something, he said it. And if God said it, that settles it. It don't matter how long it takes. Nudge your neighbor's a neighbor. If you're taking a long time, it must mean you're doing business with God. Because God don't do anything in a hurry. When God does something, it's done well. Somebody said done well. Everything is covered. All the bases are covered. Do I have a witness in here? When God saves, he saves. When God heals, he heals. When God delivers, he delivers. And when God brings you out, he brings you out. Do I have anybody here to testify that God healed their body? That God delivered them from financial ruin? That God... Come on, somebody testify that God is able to do exceed. Somebody shout exceed. So watch this. Now that I know what the definition is, watch this. I have to understand the reward. Somebody said there's a reward that come that people who have faith, there's a reward. You know what the reward is? I've been approved. Touch your neighbors and neighbor. You have been approved. You know what that means, don't you? Approved. Approved goes a long way. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Somebody say approved. You know what that means? Before I put my put my name on the application, before the application gets on the desk, before the application has any time to be reviewed. Ah, I wish I had some help in here. Uh, be, be, before even the bank president, I've already been approved. See, my shout changes now. My shouting about maybe or should be or could be. If God said it, I said if God said it, that's the question that he said. And the Bible says, I'm going to care more for you than I care about this stuff over here. If God can care for the lilies, I know. Somebody say, I know. Say, I know. I know. The Bible says, for he that cometh to God must first believe, must first believe that he is God. Somebody say, I believe. Or you ain't said like you mean it. I came to church this morning because I believe that there is a God. I didn't come to church because I'm a pastor. I didn't come to church because I get a paycheck. I didn't come to church because I want y'all to see how I look today. I came to church because there is a God. He sits high and looks low. The writer says he sits on the circle of the universe. And when he speak, men live. And when he speak, men die die somebody say he is he is who he is he is come on talk about him ah come on you know who he is ain't nobody like him give somebody a high five and say neighbor you know who he's talking about the creator god come on the creator god has thou not known has thou not heard that the everlasting god somebody say everlasting god the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither is he weary, and there's no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and shall utterly fail, but they, but they, I said, they, it's a process, baby. You don't get it overnight. And through the process of waiting for what God has asked for you to do, you conceive in your mind that you already got it. Do I have a witness in here? And the devil want to know why in the hell are you dancing when it looks like you're going through hell? What he can't see is you got a deed. You got a title to where God is taking you. 
open up your mouth. Say, so look like I'm a mess, but I'm already out of it. I'm already out of it. I know things look bad in the natural, but I got a title. I got a deed. Say, it's all going to work out. Don't worry about me, sister. Worry about yourself. Because my Bible says all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and to those that are called according to his purpose. I got a reward coming from God. And the first reward is that I've been approved. Ain't nothing worse. Ain't nothing worse to know that you need an approval that you got bad credit I give God praise I give God praise because he got my credit right I know you think I'm talking about credit but I ain't really talking about credit you see there's nothing that I could have done to bridge the gap of sin and honesty there's nothing that I could have done to bridge the gap of my moral depravity to God's holiness and so God gave me something I couldn't pay for myself he imputed me with righteousness somebody open up their mouth and give God praise watch this because you cannot do business with God if you're unrighteous. The only way you do business with God if you've been made righteous. I can prove it to you. The Bible records in the book of Genesis, chapter number four, that Abel and Cain were to bring an offering, something pleasing to God. And the Bible records that God had God had kindness and favor on what Abel offered him. But God did not receive Cain's offering. You want to know why? Because Cain's offering was an offering that was done through religion. It was not sacrificial. He was just going through the motions. Some of y'all, when you come to church, your praise ain't got no sauce on it. Your worship ain't... Your worship ain't got no sauce on it. Only thing that got sauce on is when you need something from God. Then you holler, then you cry, and then all the sauce come. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. Watch this. Watch this. So Cain, like a lot of us, think that we can get by just by coming to church. Just by not doing some things like other people do. We measure sin by what other folk do. But the devil done tricked you. Let me tell you something. You can't work your way to heaven. You can't work your way to God. You can't work your way to good grace. I want to have, listen, let me share some things with you. You don't have to have faith to be rich. You just have to work certain principles. But if you want God, you got to have faith. Who am I preaching to here? Now, if you're a person of faith and you need money to use for a ministry, well, God will give you money if you exercise faith. You can't practice faith. It has to be exercised. How do I know that? Because Abel and Cain, they were not practicing. They were doing the real thing. Somebody said, I came here with the real thing this morning. They were not practicing worship. They were worshiping. But one was worshiping God from a place of sacrifice. And knowing that in order for the sacrifice to be right, he needed God to touch it. But Cain thought he could get away by giving God man-made stuff. 
God want real worship. God want real praise. He don't want your talent. He don't want you to wave at him. Do you got any worship in you? It was because of the righteous sacrifice that Abel made that God received him. Now, where does that go? It goes all the way back to when, when his mother and father sinned against God. And how did they get recovered? The Bible says that God slew an animal and took an innocent animal and covered up their sins. And they became acceptable unto God once again because without the shedding of blood there can be no remission of sin if the blood ain't been shed if you have not confessed Jesus as Lord then you have not been made righteous and you'll never get a reward I have been made righteous because I believe everything that God said and everything that God did 2,000 years ago on a hill called Calvary, called Golgotha, there was a carpenter who was, I wish I had a witness in here. There was a lonely carpenter who they took and they tried him in courts of a charge he did not commit. It. And then they hung him on a tree. They stretched him wise. I wish I had a witness in here. And the Bible says, when his head hung down, he said to his father, it is finished. What's finished? What you sent me here to do. Now everybody that believeth in the name of the Lord shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And watch this. Not only you have everlasting life, but God has made you righteous. He has imputed righteousness upon you that you are, I wish I had some help in here. Tell your neighbor, I got something that nobody else could have given me. Made me right when I ain't been nothing but wrong. That deserves a praise all by itself. Somebody open up their mouth and give God. Come on, son. You wasn't right. He made you right. Made you right by dying for you. Now, if you believe that, then you have everlasting life. Open up your mouth. I got a reward. I said I got a reward. That's what the psalmist says. One day, I'm going to get a crown. But let me back up for a minute. I'm about to close. But the Bible records, there was a woman, there was a woman, like some of y'all, but this particular woman, she practiced her faith. For 12 years, she practiced her faith by going to doctors, going everywhere, trying to get herself better. But when she heard that Jesus, somebody said Jesus, the great physician, was going to stop by that day. She said, if I can but touch, if I can just touch, I don't need him to touch me. If I can just touch what done touched him, I shall be made whole she ain't asked him nothing he didn't know nothing was going on but all of a sudden because she wanted it bad enough do I have anybody here this morning you want it bad enough when you want it bad enough you do whatever you have to do if you have to crawl you get on your knees, whatever you got to do. If you got to write a check and give up all your money, you'll do whatever it takes, especially if you've been bleeding for 12 years. And the Bible says she spent all her money and she was worse 
but Jesus. Somebody said, but Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I would be in a worse state than I am. But Jesus, but Jesus, but Jesus came into my life. But Jesus healed me, delivered me, changed my world, put my feet on a rock to say, but Jesus. Somebody say, but Jesus. Minister Michelle, the woman was crawling on all fours because she wanted a butt moment, a butt Jesus moment. Do I have anybody in here? You came here this morning for a butt Jesus moment. And the Bible says she crawled, she wiggled until she got to a place where she can reach out and touch what her faith says she already had. And after she touched him, watch this. The Bible said immediately. Somebody said immediately. I'm trying to help somebody here. See, the reason you ain't got your miracle is because you don't know who you're really touching. I know who put this suit on my back. And it wasn't Sister Register. I know who put these shoes on my feet. And it wasn't this church. I know who woke me up this morning. And it wasn't me. But God. But God. Who is rich in mercy. Who shows mercy and kindness from generation to generation to them that love him. I love him. And because I love him, he loved me back. Say yeah. Say yeah. Sister Davis, in the old church that I came out of, they used to sing a song. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust until I die. I will trust I in I will what? I will trust. They sang that song. The battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die. Stay on. I'm going to stay on. I'm going to stay on. Watch this. See, when you believe God, you stand in a, you stand in a category almost by yourself. The Bible said, they that know their God shall be strong not may be strong not hope be strong they is strong so all that you should be doing your entire effort should not be placed in getting something to make you feel good your efforts and your intensity should be trying to find out do you really know him? Because when you know him, you can call him whenever you need to call him. And he'll answer. Even if he doesn't give you what you're asking for, he'll give you peace in the midst of whatever you're going through. He'll let you know that you're not going to go through this all by yourself. Even though he warned you before you got there. 
Watch this. That's why I don't fret for evildoers. Why? Why? Because he's promised to never leave me. He promised that goodness Even when it looks raggedy, guess what? It's still back there, still back there. He wants it to look raggedy. Watch this. Remember, my faith has to be exercised. If your faith isn't tried, there's no reward. You got to put yourself in a position for your faith to be tested. When we moved out here, the rent increased three times. Everything that we did was an act of faith that also came with consequences. What's the consequences? You out there by yourself. If God didn't tell you to go out there, you're going to sink. But if God told you to do it, he'll steady you. I don't care how long it 24 years and counting. Looked like sometime I was going down. He said, you ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. So I believe everything that God says and everything that God is. He is the object of my faith. Not what I need. I might need a heart. I might need a kidney. But that's not the object of my faith. The object of my faith is him. The currency I use to get the kidney is my trust in him. Faith is a currency in the kingdom. This thing that you could buy God by giving him more money, that doesn't get God favor. What gets God's favor is how much do you trust him? And he can be trusted. Paul told Timothy that he can keep that which you commit to him even against the last day. Wow. He says that everything, Cassandra, that's in his hand, no devil can pluck it out. What are you worried about? You worried about death? He said death ain't nothing but a sting. Where is the sting? Where is it? When we die, we only transition. And whatever weights we were carrying here, they immediately disappear. We win here and we win there. I don't practice my faith. I exercise it. I came here to exercise my faith. When you exercise your faith, then a reward will come. Somebody say, I'm, I'm ready, Lord. I'm ready for the reward. Father, I release an anointing upon their lives this morning to receive the reward and rewards that come along with them trusting you completely. That's the prerequisite is to trust in you, not to focus on their issues or their failures, but it's to focus in on you. You are the way maker. You are the eternal debt solver. Thank you this morning for coming and Supping with thank you for coming in this place and ministering to us. We bless you now and we honor you. I release an anointing upon your people that they might receive from you, God. That their faith might be charged up, increased. That they might believe by faith, God, that all things are possible to them that believe. In Jesus' name, somebody clap their hands for the master. Watch this. Even when God doesn't do what I've asked him for, it doesn't change 
what I believe. In our humanity, we are subject to certain laws that you can't get around. You say, Lord, save my mother. Okay, he saved her, but then death is still coming. Heal her, heal. So he heals her from this cancer, and he heals her from that, and he heals her from that, but death is still coming. But what you need to know is that he, he eternally saved her. There's some physical things that we have to deal with that doesn't change my eternal destiny. It doesn't change my value. It, it just means that this is something that I got to carry. These are the cards I've been dealt. And watch this. If it looks like you've been dealt some cards that, that don't look like you, just hold on to them. They'll make sense after a while. We got to learn how to play with the cards that have been dealt to us. Not despise the hand. The Bible said, do not despise the day of small beginnings. Don't despise the hand that you have. Because God is able to flip them cards. For you. I know without a doubt that he will bring me out. What God has for me. What God has for me. It is. Somebody need to say that. Somebody need to say that in your heart. The devil is trying to tell you you're not going to get it. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. So he's going to get it. It's yours. It's not, it's not your sisters. It's not your brothers. It's yours. That car, it is for me. It is for me. It is. That church building, it is for me. That marriage, it that is marriage, for it me. is for me. It is for me. Come on, somebody. It, it is for me. Is for he me. wants me happy. He wants me happy. It is for me. It is for me. It is for me. It is for me. Say it is for me. Feel it in my spirit. God wants to hear this word today. Somebody to bless the Lord right now if you believe that. If you believe it. If your faith says yes, God can't say no. Can't. He told the woman it was against the law for people, for women that were going through their cycle to be in public. 
So she was in violation of the, of the, of the Jewish law, the Levitical law. But she wanted a healing. And the Bible said that when she touched him, he said, who touched me? He said, well, how do we know? Watch what he said to her. He said, woman, he said, be not afraid or have no fear. He said, because what made you whole is your faith. Not me. It was her faith. There's power in faith. The Bible said that because of faith, Enoch had power that he was translated to heaven. He didn't even experience death because of the power of his faith. It's not the houses, not the land, not the studios, not the ministry that we want. We want faith to increase. Not your pocketbook. Your pocketbook can increase and you can lose it all because you ain't got no faith. Father, have your way in this place. Bless these, your people. Bless those that have watched by YouTube and Facebook. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, you're here this morning and you're not saved and you want Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, will you come? You're not saved. You need Jesus as a Savior. You're backslidden. You need restoration. And you feel a tugging on your heart this morning. You came here because you want to have a you want to have a get right moment with the Lord. Come now. We'll make a moment for you. We're here. Amen. Father, we thank you. In Jesus name. Announcements. Make sure you get the visitors. we thank you for replenishing our pastor who delivered the word to these your people oh God thank you for reviving us Lord and encouraging us in the midst of our trials and struggles and challenges of life Lord and we just thank you for your goodness and your grace and your mercy in Jesus name amen amen hallelujah now comes the time we will be able to give back unto the house of the Lord it's our offering time. If you need an envelope and would like an envelope, you can slip your hands up, and one of our ushers will give you an envelope. Amen. If you choose to give via electronic online, that's our website, and you can give at that particular time. We want to thank and praise God for each of you who gave and sowed seed into the work of this ministry continuously and those who particularly made that sacrificial offering during our pastor's appreciation time. Amen. Right. Amen. We thank and praise God for the technology and for the seeds that you sow because this is good ground. And we had a great time, a great experience on last week. Amen. And we want to just encourage you that we're a house that not only receives, but we give. Amen. And we're a blessing to the people. Amen. Of God. Come on, you can clap. I see you over there. I see you over there. And our pastor is a giving pastor. So when people come in and they play the saxophone and they drive all the way from Georgia to come in and we get rappers, amen, to come in and we get get different praise and worship dancers even through the house. We want to be a blessing to even those who serve in the house of God. So with your giving and with your monetary sacrificial giving, these are the things that we are able to do and be a blessing back unto you. Amen. So we thank you for that. Amen. We know that some of you are still getting your envelopes ready. Amen. Amen. But looks like we're all clear at this time. Ushers, you may serve the people. We know the service is continuing on and as we are going. It's a little bit extended, amen. But we thank and praise God for your patience as you continue to give. We want to remind you and let you know that on Friday, November the 11th, at 6 o'clock p.m., that's Veterans Day, amen, we will be here in the church for a movie night kickoff of our new book, 
Uh, amen for the Women's Wild Book a kickoff. It's 12 women of the Bible. And we will resume our next meeting with just the women on Zoom on the third Friday on the 18th. Now that kickoff movie night, we're inviting all those who want to come. So the men, if you want to come and be a part of that movie night, hot dogs and candy and popcorn, we're going to have a great fun and fellowship time here at our house as we fellowship with that movie night kickoff. Amen. And then we want to thank you all who have been bringing in your toiletry items as we give back into our community, amen, with different supplies and, and soaps and lotions and wipes and various different supplies. We thank and praise you. We, we expect that basket in the back to be filled up and to overflow because God has been gracious to us and has blessed us, and we want to be a blessing to the community here, amen. Let us stretch our hands towards the offering basket. Father, we thank you that everyone who has given and purpose, Lord, in their heart to give, oh God, have given not out of grudge, not because they were coerced in any way, but they gave out of the free will of their heart, oh God. Whether they gave, Lord Jesus, through the envelopes, whether they gave through online giving, whether they're online right now giving, we thank and praise God for each one, God. We know we may not see some, but we know that they have been being receiving your word and being a blessed by the word that's preached and come out of this house. So we thank you for every seed that has been sown in this house. May you multiply it and may you increase it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to just remind you all and let you know that our dear sister Tamika Johnson is going in for eye surgery. And those of you who've had eye surgery before, we ask you to keep her lifted up in prayer. That can be a traumatic thing. It can be a little scary for her. Amen. So we thank and praise God and pray that the surgeons will be guided during that procedure as they prepare for her surgery tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. And we want you all to know you've been hearing it over and over and over and over again. I'm going to let you all know from my perspective, I've been here for 22 years since Silas was just a baby serving here. And on the 19th of November, we're going to be celebrating who? Amen. Amen. Some of you may know and some of you may not know that when I came here and I was assigned here from Fort Bragg, North Carolina, Sister Scylla was my sponsor in the military to take me around. And so from that on, she took me around and helped me find a place and get my family situated. She opened her home up to allow me to stay here, stay at her home for a time as I went around. She took care of Silas when I was working during the day and they was at the church so many times. And so on this day, we're going to give her an honor and honor, give honor where honor is due. She made so many sacrifices, amen. We know that we gave her honor during our pastor's appreciation, but everyone don't get to the big 7-0, amen? And she want her own day, if y'all know our first lady, amen? So we're asking you to go through your closets and look through, get with the young people and figure out what you're going to wear for the 70s, amen? Amen, because we're going to all dress up in our 70s outfit, amen? Amen, to celebrate her. Why? Because we want to honor her because that's what she told us she won't. And that's what we're going to do. Amen. Amen. If you've not given your $50 to be able to be a part of this great celebration, to eat and feast, amen, and also to give a gift to her, amen, we ask you to give that gift. It's not too late to RSVP. You can RSVP to Elder Renee. Wave your hand over here. And if you didn't get an invitation and you want to come on in, bring somebody, amen. We have already planned and allocated for a certain number of people. But as you all know, sometimes the numbers go up and sometimes they come down. But regardless, we still want to make sure that we have a full house to honor her, amen. And we don't want to go out to the highways and hedges and compel other men and women to come in and in honor our first lady, amen. So we're going to do it. So we hope to see you there, Ashley. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. We hope to see you there, Gigi. <laughs> Amen. Mm. God bless. God bless. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. And we had such a wonderful time on last week. I just got to just share this with you. Um, Kim, would you bring that uh, for me? Amen. Sometimes, you know, people just give out of the kindness of their heart. And we don't always know. We don't always expect it. And people just give and do. But when they come and they give and they serve and they want to be a blessing, in this house, we want to be a blessing to them. So to honor the woman of God who come in and not one time, not two times, but several times has blessed us with muffins and soda for our pastor's appreciation. Professor T.T., will you come on down? Amen. Come on down. Move, move, move. We want to honor you because those refreshments are nice refreshments. Amen. As you come in with the cornbread muffins and the chocolate muffins and the blueberry muffins. So we thank and praise God for you on behalf of New Life. Prize and our family. Thank you. Thank you. She says, Sister Kala, I have some soda and some refreshments for you. Please announce to the people to come and give and to partake. So I thank you, praise God. Come on, New Life. Let's give it up for Professor T.T. And then we have one more brief presentation for this lady who's a beautiful chocolate lady. Amen. A chocolate drop, amen, who's been a blessing to the program, amen, and have served in that capacity for five years. Somebody get the tissue out, get the tissue, get the box of tissue. I know, right? Bring the box of tissue. Come on up here, Chantel. Oh, Chantel. Our beautiful chocolate drop. We didn't get you flowers this time. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, swing, swing, swing it like you were swinging last night, hey, yeah, my God is good, hey, so, so on behalf of New Life, and under the direction and the command of our pastor, <laughs> better believe it. We didn't get you flowers this year, but we got you some Go Diva chocolate. Go Diva, Go Diva, Go! Amen, amen. Oh, and she got a birthday on Wednesday. Happy birthday to you, sweetheart. That's short, baby, there. I just want to say thank you and God bless you and I love y'all. And I'm not going to cry because Minister Carla said I wasn't. I'm going to make her wrong. But I love y'all. Thank you. God bless you. Bless you, darling. Amen. Hallelujah. I think that is it. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, our visitors. If you have never been in this church, and this is your first time coming here and stepping into this house, please stand so we can officially acknowledge you. You could have went to any church in the Tampa Bay area. They got hundreds of churches in the Tampa Bay area, but you chose to come here. Amen. I bet you outside. She's from Dallas. They win it, they win it 14 to 0. Amen, amen. Would you all like something to say Let's or say share? Where are you from? Uh, okay. Hold up. Tell them. She, she just moved here. How long have you been here, sweetie? Tell them. Three weeks. Come on. That Listen. We've had some people say, they said, well, how you doing? Are you new to here? said, no, I've been here for two years. Two years? And you just come to church? Three weeks. That's a record. How'd you find out about us? Google. Google. 
You saw Sherwood, didn't you? You saw Sister Davis. Amen, amen. We thank and praise God for you all on behalf of our pastor, Bishop Dr. So Robert right. L. Register, his lovely wife, Lady Scylla, and all the New Life family. We trust and hope and believe that you had a wonderful time, amen. And I, I see the man of God was fighting on, fighting on, fighting on, fighting on. Oh, you fight on. And it's encouraging to see that, amen, and to see you praising. And my dear sister, we don't see your mom here, but we're praying for you as you go through those challenges. And we love having your baby girl with us. And we'll put her on program. And we're going to put you on program. You keep coming too. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor, this concludes the announcements, and we're ready for the benediction. A anything else, Sister Gala? She said, I can go. I see what you have to go through, mother. I see. I try to give her some slack, but I see. Take on. She's got that old takeover spirit on her. <laughs> Let's stand for the benediction. How be glad they came to God's house today. Good to see Sam's sister. Amen. That girl taller than you. You looking? She looking you out your eyes now. You can't discipline her like that no more. You gotta look her straight in the eyes. Amen. Wait a minute, we had, yesterday, uh, Thursday, Friday was your birthday, or Thursday, Friday, 74 years old, we celebrated his birthday last night. Look at it, and it was a crowd, we had a great crowd of people, we danced, had a good time last night. And the food was good. Can I come back and get another yeah, plate? It's, it's some in the rear. We brought it back, what? Bishop. It's, it's some in the back. Yeah, it was good. Well, look here. I wanted to make a U-turn and come back and get some of that pasta last night. You got the pasta? I told you you get a reward when you walk in faith. And you come to New Life. <laughs> That's true. We hope we said something. Hope you heard something. Hope you experienced something that you might tell somebody that there's a church hidden somewhere in Brandon. Hope that you might think about coming back. Amen. All hearts and minds are clear. God, we thank you for what you did today, what you have always done for us. As lead us and guide us and care for us. We thank you for the people that came to this door for the first time. We pray they had a marvelous experience in you. We pray that the, the word becomes applicable for their lives. We pray that when we leave this place, we tell someone about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now unto him who's able to keep each of us from falling. He alone has the power to present each of us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to him majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remind you, if your faith says yes, God can't say no. God bless you. We love you. Give somebody, give God a big hand. Praise. I love you. Bless you. Hope to see you on Wednesday and Sunday. Take us home, Sherwood. Say, my God.